assalamu alaikum today we will be going over data integrity so data stored on a computer should always be accurate consistent and up to date right it is really important for data to be up to date because a company cannot be living in the past you need to bring in innovation you need to have the most con up to date data in order to like proceed with new projects and stuff right you cannot be catering to some demand that was five six years ago and it is not present right now so the, there are two methods to ensure data integrity one is validation the other is verification and we'll be discussing these in details right so first of all how can the accuracy or integrity of data be compromised right so it can be compromised during the data entry and transmission test so when you're entering data or when they're being transmitted from one form to the database or something or you're transferring over files right or by malicious attacks on data for example through malware and hacking right so malware and hacking someone can hack into your account hack into a database and then change its content so you are compromising data integrity there and then the third part is through accidental data loss that is caused through hardware issues right so what if your hard drive corrupts you do not have a backup server on board right so you are losing data you're losing data's integrity right so now we move on to validation right so validation is a method of checking if the data entered is reasonable but it cannot check if it is correct or accurate right so if there is an age field right you can enter any age so but that should be a positive age right you cannot just enter your age as a negative number right so that is something that validation checks right so in an age field you cannot enter a negative number so that is a validation check right but you are 18 years old and you're entering your age as 28 right so validation cannot check that right so we'll be going over validation tests their descriptions and an example of the data that passes the check right so when is the data correct when it passes the validation check right so first of all we have our type check so it checks whether non-numeric data has been input into a numeric field right so when will it pass right so when you are entering 10.5 dollars in a field where the price of an item is required right so you require a price you're entering a price as a numeric field right next we have range so it checks whether data is entered between the upper limit and the lower limit so take for example you have a test right so the lowest percentage on the test can be zero percent the highest can be hundred percent right you have a bottom line uh, range and you have an upper limit right so a percentage of a student that is in nine ninety percent fits the range right it is between 10 uh, it is between 0 and 100 but what if there is a negative percentage or a percentage greater than 110 that would fail the range check because it is either lower than the lower limit or upper than the upper limit right so that is where your range check comes into because a percentage cannot be either lower than zero percent or greater than hundred percent next we have format next we have format which checks whether the data has been entered in the agreed format right so you have those formats where you have to enter date right your date of birth take for example so we have a format where you have to enter date as day day month month and year 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 so we have this format right so entering a date such as 11 2021 so 11 is the day 03 being the month of march and 2021 being the year so it is a correct uh date format so therefore the date will be accepted now we have length check right so length check is important as well because it checks whether the data has the required number of characters or numbers right so take for example you have these um username fields right where your username has an upper limit like take for example there are certain cases where you have an upper limit so it cannot be longer than 24 characters or it cannot be longer than 20 characters so that is where length check comes in right so take for example we have this example here where we have to type in a telephone number which should contain 11 digits and this number 0 to 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 contains 11 digits if it were 8 or 12 it would not work because the length check would seem to ignore it 
or give an error out because you are not inputting the right amount of digits now we have presence check so presence check is uh, something that you have witnessed every time right take for example when you're registering for something any website if you're registering you need to enter your email address right so it is really important to enter your email address and then your password those are fields where presence is required right you need to enter something there's also an star asterisk over there on the edge which sometimes indicates that this field needs to be inputted or else you cannot proceed right so that is what it does so it checks to make sure if a field is not left empty when it should contain data and entering the email address where compulsory so when it is compulsory you need to enter the email address right next we have existence check right so these two might look the same uh, i might sound the same right but there's a difference between them so existence checks if a data in a file or a file name actually exist so when you're looking for a file inside of your computer named new pdf right if it exists it would pass the existence check if it would not exist in the in your computer then it would fail the existence check next we have the limit so limit is just like range but it only checks one part right it either checks the lower limit it either checks the upper limit range would check both the limits lower and upper right so here we have an example that when we're typing if the upper limit of some type of a course is 20 years right and you are 15 years old so you can take the course like here you are 10 years old you can take the course but if you're 25 years old you cannot take the course and i mean if you were to enter minus two then it would have been accepted right because it does not have a lower limit check right so a minus two year old person theoretically would be acceptable so there's a limitation to this limit check right then you have consistency check so consistency is checks whether data in two or more fields match up correctly right so take for example you're choosing your uh, title as miss and then you're choosing your gender as male so it would not make sense right it would not be consistent because miss is uh, traditionally used for females right so you need to if you're choosing miss as your title you need to choose gender as female right so this is an example where you would pass the check if you chose miss and then female but if you chose miss and then male then that would be inconsistent and that would fail a consistency check if it were in place then you have uniqueness so checks that if each value entered is unique right so take for example um if you want to design a website right and your domain name is already taken so you cannot take the same domain name you will have to buy it because it has to be unique right so choosing a website name that is already taken that would fail the uniqueness test right you need to buy a new domain either of a different name for it to be unique or either buy it from the person who already has it because it needs to be unique so these are nine of the validation checks right so these are nine of the validation check first of all as we discussed why it is it important for data to be accurate then we went over validation which is a method of checking if the data entered is reasonable but it cannot check if it is accurate or correct right then we went over nine types of validation tests their descriptions then example of data passing the validation check right so it is really important to know whether your limit whether there is a limitation to your check or not right and in terms of what you get in paper is you get a certain situation and then you need to write a type of validation check why it would be useful and then write somewhat of a description right so that is why we're discussing description here because you need to present to the examiner whether your named validation test is useful and that current situation right i mean if you were to check a range right if you were to check a percentage of a student right you would not use um limit check because it only checks one limit right how would you cater to someone who had a negative percentage who entered a negative percentage right so that is where your limitation comes in and you need to be aware of situations where you can use either of these nine tests right so you need to be aware of these nine tests you need to be aware of their description and you need to be aware of certain situation so situationally used so this is really important this was part one this was validation 
the next video will be about verification which is another method